Hi everybody, let's go over the chapter 5.1 practice test. Uh, this is taken on, I'm going to give it to you guys May 6, 2021. Question number one. The table displays the ages of teachers at North Central High School. <clears throat> you have age group. You have number of uh, teachers. You might want to call this the frequency. Or another word for frequency is just count. And then you have something called the relative frequency, which is basically just a fraction to a decimal. And that's what we need to do. Determine uh, 1a, determine the relative frequency for each interval to complete the table. All right, so for this problem, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just get the total. And to get the total, all I need to do is um, add them all up. Let's go ahead and do that. So take your calculator, add them all up. And I get 60 as a total here. So basically what we're going to do here is just change each of these. 18 over 60, 21 over 60, 12 over 60, 6 over 60, and uh, 3 over 60. show you guys a little of a shortcut on my graphing calculator here. So I'm going to go to my graphing calculator. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to go to y equals in the top left there. Clear that out. And I'm going to type in um, right next to alpha, the green button, is an x. That is the variable x divided by 60. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to second table. So second is the orange button, and then table is above the up arrow. And I'm going to do switch it. To, it's right now it's on auto. I'm going to go to ask. Okay. So now click on table. And what I can do now is just type in all of those numbers that we just had. So like 18. And it's telling me 18 divided by 60. So if x is equal to 18 um, over 60, it gives me 0 0.30 or 0.30. 21, 0 0.35. So 12 divided by 60 gives us 0 0.20 or 0 0.2. Remember, you can always add a 0, uh, 6, and 3. Let me go ahead and take a picture of those. Okay. And then we can just go back and fill that in. So that means this was 0 0.30, 0 0.35, 0 0.20, 0 0.10, and 0 0.05. Now, how do you know you did this all correctly? Well, if you add these all up, the fractions, you will get 60 <coughs> over 60. And if you add up all of the decimals, this should add up to 100%. Okay? Uh, 1B, go ahead and construct a relative frequency histogram for the data. So basically I'm just taking this row right here and we're going to graph it. Okay, so let me see if I can help you by color coding these. Okay, so for those that are 20 to 30, then I have 0.30. So I go to point 30 here, and there is my histogram. Okay, those who are 30 to 40 is this row, and there is point 35. So I'm going to start at point 35. You can use these dotted lines if you want to. So that is between 30 and 40. Let's go over to the 40 to 50 year olds. There's 20%. So I'm going to start at point 20, and then just go across, right? So the 40 to 50, there is a relative frequency of 20%, point, 
uh, 0.20 or 20% of the teachers are within that age group. This one will be 10. Between 50 and 60. And the last one, let's choose purple. Between 60 and 70 years old, there is 5%. And we can go ahead and erase the dotted lines. That was just to help us as reference points. And that is our answer for 1B. Let's go on to 1C. Does the histogram approximate a normal distribution? Remember, a normal distribution is going to look like the ghost. Cut it in half. Uh, and what's our answer there? Does it match that? No. This histogram does not represent a normal distribution. because it's not bell-shaped. So the ghost is kind of like a bell-shaped. And then number two, um, it's not or no, nor symmetrical about the mean. Remember this right here is the mean, and you're basically saying, does the uh, purple side there match the green side? That would be symmetrical. D, what changes in the data would result in a distribution that is closer to normal? So if I look at this, I would probably want to do something like this. I would probably want to push these down bring this one all the way up here, right? I want this one to be the tallest one, and I would also increase these, okay? Because we want it to basically look like, you know, if I had this in green, you kind of want it to look like that curve. Does that make sense? All right, let's go ahead and write some sentences. So what did we just show you in the picture? I would probably have fewer, younger teachers. and more older teachers. And where do we want the most of them to be? With a peak, kind of like the mountain, the highest point, in the middle, would result in a distribution, or a graph, in science, I mean, in statistics, we call these distributions. A distribution that is closer. And what do we want? To a normal distribution. Okay, so that was question number one. Number two, the lifetime of a certain type of battery is normally distributed. Remember, normally distributed is this kind of like ghost-looking graph here, bell curved. So much on both sides. The battery's mean lifetime is 42. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that in red. It is 42 hours. So right in the middle, the mean is 42 hours, with a standard deviation of 1.2 hours. Use the mean and this. A. Use the mean and standard deviation to label the intervals on the horizontal axis of the normal curve. So again, the horizontal axis is this one right here in yellow. And we're just going to label it. 
and it says include three standard deviations above and below the mean. So basically to go above, which means addition, so addition on this side, and then this going this direction is subtracting. So basically I'm going to be adding 1.2 add 1.2, add 1.2. And here, uh, 42 plus 1.2 would give me 43.2. 43.2 plus 1.2 would give me 44.4. Uh, and adding 1.2 would give me 45.6. Okay, now if you go in this direction, you're going to be subtracting. Forty two minus one point two will give me forty point eight. Forty point eight minus one point two is going to give me thirty nine point six. And thirty nine point six minus one point two is going to give me thirty eight point four. So again, the red line is the center, measure of center is the mean. The measure of spread is the standard deviation. So this is one standard deviation away from the red line. This is two standard deviations, and this is three standard deviations. This is one standard deviation below, we say, the red line. Two standard deviations below, and three standard deviations below. Okay. 2B. Determine the percent of batteries with a lifetime between... Let's kind of color code this. We can... Between one standard deviation below, so that would be this one right here, below the standard deviation, and one above, one standard deviation above would be right here. So they basically want to know what is the area of this yellow curve. Well, this goes back to the empirical rule. Remember, the empirical rule is a normal distribution, ND, and it basically looks like that. And within one standard deviation, it is 68. So the answer for this one would be about 68%. And again, the rule is 68, 95, 99 point, um, seven percent. So that would be one, two, three standard deviations away. Okay, let's use a different color now. Let's see if we can erase magic. All right, let's do purple, maybe a little blue. Uh, 2C, determine the percent of batteries with a lifetime of 39.6. So I'm going to locate 39.6, which is right here, and 44.4, which is right here. And you'll notice that it's 2 there, so the answer would be 2 standard deviations away. So that would be this one, 95%. Um, of batteries with a lifetime of 30 between 30.96 hours and 44.4 hours. And that's question number two. Let's go on to question number three. Question number three says the weights of a large group of 18 month old girls are normally distributed. I'm going to circle the word distributed because this, this is going to tell me that it's kind of like in our normal curve with a mean, so the center here is 24, and a standard deviation of 3.5. So remember each of those tick marks, minus, minus one standard deviation, minus two, minus three. Okay. 3A, determine the z-scores for the weights of 17 pounds and 27.5 pounds. Interpret the meaning of each of these scores. Okay, so our formula we're going to use is 
um, z equals the data input value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I'm going to do 17. So this is an x value. You can call it x1 because we're going to have multiple x's here. And so I have 17 minus our standard, or our, our mean, which was 24, divided by 3.5. And you will get a z-score of 17 minus 24 divided by 3.5 is going to give you a z-score of negative 2. Okay, what does a z-score of negative 2 mean? The... 17 pound baby is two standard deviations what above or below below the mean weight of babies weight of 18 month old girls and I'm going to highlight something here. Below means with the negative number. Okay, let's go ahead and try that same problem now, but do the 27.5 year olds, 27.5 pound girls. Uh, Z, same formula. I'm going to call this one x2. That just means it's a second weight minus the mean divided by standard deviation. Uh, we have 27.5, our mean was 24, and our uh, standard deviation was 3.5. And then we get a score of 1. So basically the same thing. The... Uh, 27.5 pound baby girl is one standard deviation. What? Above or below? Above the mean weight. How do we know it's above? It's above because this is a positive. Let me give you guys a quick visual. The 27.5 pound is right here, and that kind of marks up with that first red line. And the green one, the 17 pound girl, is, is two. So that's two red marks to the left. Okay? All right. Now it says. Use the percent of 18-month-olds who weigh between 17 and 27.5 pounds and explain your reasoning. Okay, so I'm going to use this picture up here. Let's see if we can do some magic. Is I'm going to do this. Let's, um, let's, let's do paste one more time. magic okay let's go over here uh, maybe we didn't need to know let's see okay between whoops 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 okay between here in black, one standard deviation away represents 68%. And it's symmetrical, which means you can cut it in half, which basically means that this this um, one side is 34% and this side is 34%. So over here I have 0 0.34, 0 0.34, and I needed two standard deviations away, which represents uh, 95. So if you think about it, 
guess I didn't need to know find the green tails now that I think about it. The orange represents 95. And if the, so 95 goes from here all the way to here. But this inside from here to here represents 68%. And basically what I'm trying to find is, let's get a new color. Let's get purple. I'm trying to figure out what this purple region is. So two purples plus the two oranges equal 95. Uh, two purple plus the two oranges equal uh, 95. And we said the two oranges is equal to 68. I can't write, that's 95. So 2p plus 0.68 equals 0.95. And if I subtract this away, why do I keep writing that? Let's try that again, sorry. If I subtract 0 0.68, then I get the two purples are equal to uh, 95 minus 0 0.68 is 27. So that means one purple region is equal to 13.5. Uh, okay, so let's kind of put this all together. Over here on this one, this is what I need. I have 13.5 plus 34 plus 34, or 13.5 plus 68. Guess I didn't really need this one. So here's my math. 0.34 plus 0.34 plus 13.5 gives me 81.5% is my answer. Okay, what part did I not need? I did not need to find the green tails. And that was number 3B. All right, if you were able to do that problem just using the empirical rule, um, that's very good. If you just do the calculator and don't really understand it, I think it's kind of a waste, but... Let me show you guys how I do that with the calculator. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Second mode or second quit. I'm gonna do second vars. Number two, normal CDF. Okay, the lower bound I'm gonna have on this is the 17 pounds, comma. Then it says upper bound, so what's the very top? That would be the 27.5. And then the mean, which is um, 24, comma, and then the standard deviation, which is 3.5. Um, this one's more exact because the empirical rule um, kind of does approximating. So if you got 81.8 or 81.5, that would be totally acceptable. All right, question number four. Let's go over. All students who complete the Algebra 2 course at Ridgeway High School take a common final exam. The exam scores are normally distributed with a mean of 105 and a standard deviation of 16. Kyle and Ethan are Algebra 2 students who took the final exam. Kyle's, let's pick Kyle to be um, green, had 135. I'm going to call this X1. And Ethan's score was 93. I'm going to call this 1 x2. Calculate the z-score for each. So let's go ahead and do this by hand. Let's go ahead and do the green one over here. So z equals x1, which just basically means the first score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So x1 is 135. Uh, the mean here is uh, 105 and a standard deviation of 16. And if you do this, you get a z-score um, for Kyle to be 1.875.
notice that it's positive. Let's do some same thing for Ethan's, or if you want to try it, just press pause and then press play when you're ready. Z equals x2 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So the x2 value, Ethan's score was 93 minus the standard deviation, I mean the mean of 105 over 16. And you get a z score for Ethan to be negative. 0.75. And I want to give you a visual, and hopefully this makes sense to you. Here's the curve. The mean of 105. Okay, so the green, Kyle's z score, is 1.875. Or if you think about it, 135 is what? Oops, that was supposed to be green. Is way up here. And notice that number is going to be, right, a, a positive z score. That's why it's positive. And the score of 93 is below the black line. You might have something over there. Does that make sense? So this is 93, and this is um, a score of 135. Okay, what do we what do we know about Ethan's? Uh, Ethan's final exam. What's that number mean? It is um, 0.75 standard deviations below the mean. Not too great. Right? The mean, another way of saying it, is just average. You're below average on that case. Let's look at Kyle's. Kyle's final exam is 1.875 standard deviations What above the mean. So again, to highlight that, positive numbers go towards the right. That's why it is above. Negative numbers, <coughs> in this case, is below. That's going towards the left. Okay, question number uh, letter C, 2C. What or what is this? 4C. What percent of students had a final exam score lower than Ethan's? So Ethan was the blue one. I'm just going to draw another quick one. And Ethan's was in blue, so we kind of want to know who's lower or to the left of him. And so basically I just need to calculate from the z-score to a percent, right? So picture, we talked about this. Then always get the formula. And then here we're going from a z score to a percent, which you can use your table or um, the calculator, which I'll show you both. And then um, you're solving for x or whatever you're trying to solve for. Okay, so I already know it's negative 0.75. Let's go ahead and use the table. Negative 0.75. Okay, we already, again, this, this has a z-score, so that's what I need to look for, and it's negative over here, so let's go ahead and look for this one. Let me choose a color I have not used. Let's use orange. So negative 7, and I'm going to go up here to 5, so it's that number. And then here gives me a percent, so that's negative 0 0.05, which is 0 0.2263, 2263, 2263. Um, so that region represents 22, um, 66. So basically, if Ethan's right here, 
that means that um, he did better than 22.66% of people. But if you go the other direction, the screen direction, if you just subtract it but, or add up to 1, right? You add up the blue plus green equals 1. So if I take 1 minus uh, 2266, um, you get the green region. Okay, D. What percent of students who took the exam received scores that fell between Ethan's and Kyle's? Okay, so Kyle's was green, and we have 1.875. 1.875. So I just need to calculate a percent. Oops. So I'm going to go to the positive. I'm going to go to 1.8. And I'm just going to move along. And then 7.5 is between these two numbers. So what I'm going to do is find the average of those two numbers. Let me take a picture and I'll do it with you. Okay, so if I go to my calculator, I'm just going to add those two numbers I just circled. 0.96926 plus... 0.96995 and divided by 2. That's the midpoint between those two numbers, which is 96. Um, take a picture of that, I always forget. So Um, Kyle's is this region represents 0 0.969605 and so I guess I shouldn't have used uh, let's use this one different color that was the last problem so if I just subtract the blue then I'm going to get the leftover green. So 0 0.969605 minus, um, it's a decimal, 0 0.2266. Uh, six. Uh, you will get a score of uh, 74. Seventy-four point three. Well, it's a decimal, 74.30, which is that means 74.3% 70, of students lie between. Um, Ethan and Kyle. Okay. E, test scores are often reported as percentiles rather than z-scores. Uh, determine Ethan and Kyle's percentiles on the final exam. Okay, so they want a percentile. And if you go up here, um, let's keep their color coding here. Uh, Kyle's in green. This is this is Kyle's. So what was our answer there? It was this number. So ninety six point nine. So we could say Kyle is in the ninety seventh percentile. What does that mean? Kyle's right here. There's only um, three percent of people who did better than him and he did 97 percent better than others okay let's do Ethan's Ethan's was um, this number 22 point um, 
six six. So if you subtract that, that would give you like seventy four. Let's keep it. Let's keep it consistent. Seventy four point uh, thirty percent. So if you do it this way. Uh, Ethan was in the 20, 23rd percentile. That means he did better than 23% of people, but that means also 74% of people did better than him. Okay? Okay, this one says... Calculate the 75th percentile for the final exam to the nearest whole number. So the final exam score is an unknown. So they're basically saying, what is this value if this whole blue region here represents 75? Well, if I use my formula, no, nope, not that one, uh, z minus equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation. And we're trying to solve for x. Z we can get by just looking at the table, going to a percent. Um, and also the standard deviation we already know, which was, I believe, um, sorry, get those numbers back up here. 105 and 16. 105 and 16. And we're trying to find this x value, and then we need to get a z for 75. So let's go back to our table. So 75 percentile is actually pretty good. That basically means it's going to be the positive z score. I'm not looking at the negatives because that would be to the left or lower than 50%. So let's go ahead and look for a 75. Point seven. Whoops, that's too much. Try that again. There we go. And this number, so we're just going to meet right there. Nope, nope, nope. That's a z-score of 75. We're looking for a 75%. Wrong way. Let's locate 75. Right between these two. What I'm trying to go is from percent to a z-score percent, which is inside the table, to the outside to the z-score. So um, let's just call that point, and then between these two. So point, point 0 0.06 plus point 0 0.075, because point 0 0.075 is between these two. This will give me, oh, can't, can't write my decimals. Come on, Mr. Uh, points. 0.6, so this would give me 0.675, okay, 0.675, and then we just solve for x, and then I'll show you guys with the calculator. I'm just going to cross multiply these two numbers, so 16 times 0.675, and then I'm going to add 105 to both sides. So my calculator ready equation is this. Let me show it to you and then. All right. Let's see. 16 times 0.675 plus, remember, order of operations PEMDAS is going to multiply, then add. Uh, 115.8. 115.8 is our answer. And it says a whole number, so x equals 116. Let me show you guys how I do that with our calculator. So I'm going to go to second vars. We're going to do inverse norm. Our area is 0.75. Our mean was 105. 
standard deviation is 16. And there you get 115.8. Okay, so that was question number four. All right, question number five here. For each interval, shade the portion of the normal curve, then calculate the probability. So I'm going to write, first we're going to shade, and then second we're going to calculate a probability. Okay, determine the probability of randomly selecting a data value between the mean and one standard deviation. So one standard deviation, the symbol again is the O with a tail, and um, below means a minus one. Okay, so I'm going to use the empirical rule, 68, 95, 99.7. And remember, this is one standard deviation, two, and three. So this region here, this here represents 68. Point 68. And if you divide that in half, that gives me point 0.34. But we want everything to below. All right, so again, in 5a, they're asking between the mean, which is right here in red. Dan's got a different color here. And one standard deviation below the mean, which is right here. So they basically want to know what's this light blue area. And the answer is 0.34 or 34%. All right, let's try B. Determine the probability of selecting a data value between the mean. So again, I have to start here. And two standard deviations above. So they want us to know what is this green region. Well, remember, two standard deviations away. That would be 95. And if you divide 95 in half, uh, you will get 47.5. So 47.5% is your answer. Again, how did I get that? This green idea comes from the empirical rule, which is right there. Heather is ordering pizza for her son's birthday party. Mario's Pizza has a mean delivery of 25. So I'm going to write Mario's. And his mean is 25. And our standard deviation of 8. What does that mean? You're, at, you're going to wait the delivery of 25 minutes per pizza, and it could call, take more, more than 8 minutes, so plus 8 or minus 8. Authentic pizza has a mean delivery of 30 minutes, so on average you're going to wait longer, but the spread is 4. So this is authentic. The delivery times of both pizzas are normally distributed. Heather wants to have pizza delivered between 20 and 30 minutes after she orders it, so it will be hot and ready to serve at the best time during the party. What is the probability that Mario's Pizza will deliver the pizza between 20 and 30 minutes after she orders it? Explain your work. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a picture. And here we actually don't know the, um, the mean of the whole problem. But Mario's, you are waiting... Oh, you do. We're doing Mario's Pizza. Sorry. Duh. Mario's Pizza says it. Okay, so that would be 25. Okay, so 25 and 8 as our standard deviation. And you want it between 20 and 30. So now this is not standardized. You cannot use the empirical. Here's why you cannot do the empirical rule because there it does not tell you how many standard deviations above or below. It doesn't say that. It just gives you some numbers, uh, 20 and 30. So there's two ways you can do this. You can just calculate. Um,
I'd probably do something like this. I'll just tell you conceptually. I'm going to find this one, the 20 minutes, which is black. And then 30 minutes, which is the red. And then I would just subtract the black because that would give me, um, just copy and paste this. If I do that, then it's going to give me the yellow. So black plus yellow would equal the red. And that's what you kind of want. Okay, that's if you did, you know, by hand, figure out the z-score to percents, and then subtracting the percents. Or we can just put that in our calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my calculator. 25, 8, 25, and 8. Second, VARS, CDF. Um, between 20 minutes, 30 minutes, standard duration 25, and I forgot the last one, which was uh, 8. And my answer is 46.8. 46.8. Okay, what is the problem if you did authentic pizza between 20 and 30 minutes? Okay, so I'm just going to draw a picture and basically do the same thing. Okay, with authentic pizzas, I'm going to use the red portion up here, 30 and 4. Remember the spread is 4, like plus 4, minus 4. And the 30 minutes, now if you think about it, is here and here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I would, if I was doing this, I would calculate the percentage of this black area with 20. I would calculate based off authentic pizzas 30 in this red region, right? And then basically the red region is equal to um, the black region plus the yellow region and if I do that then I'm able to solve for the yellow so let me just write that out black plus the yellow equals the red from the previous step and then if you just yellow is equal to the red minus the black or we could just uh, put it into our calculator 30 and 4 Second, enter. I got those same numbers, right? But the only difference is I'm waiting between 20 and 30 minutes, but then my standard deviation is 4. And I get 49.4. 49, 4. Which pizzeria should Heather choose to order? To have the best chance of having the pizza delivered when she wants. Well, I want a higher percentage that they can get me the pizza between 20 and 30 minutes. So which one is higher? That would be what? Authentic pizzas. She should choose authentic pizza because their probability delivering between 20 and 30 minutes is a little higher than Mario's Pizza. Does that make sense? Because authentic pizza, I have a 49.4% chance of getting my pizza between 20 and 30 minutes. But with Mario's pizza, I only have a 46.8 chance. 
well, I want a higher chance that my pizza is hot in between 20 and 30 minutes, so I'm going to choose Authentics Pizza. That was our practice test. Good luck, guys.